Hello YouTube! Welcome to another episode of Stellaris here in the Fugitive Theater. Well, we're picking up right where we left off last time. We finished a invasion of a pre-FTL uh, civilization here on Adbrade 1. It was a planet that had been identified as a possible colonization target, only to find that, well, there was a, a, a living civilization on the planet that was uh, pre-FTL. They were they were basically in their renaissance period. They were running around shooting each other with guns. Uh, and we looked at them and basically said, all right, we'll take that. And we created an army, marched in, took over the planet, and are now well on our way to completely assimilating the population into our cybernetic hive mind. They are uh, adding to our sort of cyborg uh, races. And... So with that basically done, with another whole colony under our control, we turn to the, uh, the solar systems that we are currently exploring. Specifically Shulmach over here, which I believe we actually just very much right at the very end of last episode, completely surveyed. So let's take a look here. So the science ship that just finished that survey... I could send it forward into the rest of the galaxy, but I kind of want to backfill all of this. Again, like taking a look at our position and trying to see how this all is going to bang out. This looks like it ends, like it doesn't go down this way. So this goes up this way. So I actually am not sure how we're supposed to get access to down here. This might like loop back this way or something. I'm not sure. But this almost certainly continues up this way and starts to fill out this way. So we got a lot to potentially go out into that way, but I, I really kind of want to backfill what we've got here. So I think our science ship, um, we're going to go here and we're going to survey this one. And then we're just going to sort of backfill. In the meantime, our constructor ship, we're going to build a star base and boom, we're going to expand our borders. So that's a good start. In the meantime, what do we have here? Uh, our home planet, we actually, uh, lost a few population on it because we transferred them to the new, the new world. And the new world is doing just fine as well. Almost all of the population looks like they are, uh, almost all assimilated. And in the meantime, we have, we've just built another agriculture district. Um, because all of these new populations all need food. They all need a lot of food. Because they are partially organic. So that's done. And now we're going to build the generator because one of the big things we're missing uh, here is energy credits. Energy credits are quite short. Um, we're still generating more than we are spending, but not by nearly as much as we were before. Uh, and that planet in particular is at a severe deficit of them. So we just finished this. We expanded our borders. Ta-da. Welcome to our new solar system. Now construction ship that just did that the first thing we're going to have it do is build a mining station over here we're going to extract all of these uh, uh minerals here because we need a lot of we have we are extracting a ton of minerals like don't get me wrong we are way up on minerals but we need a ton of minerals because eventually we need to shunt all of that into alloy production because alloys are what we use to actually build ships so we have to uh, we have to make sure that we've got a, a significant supply of minerals, so we're going to start by doing that. Technological acquisition successful. Oh, and hey, another uh, another science finished. So we finished zero G laboratories. So all of our research stations are going to output 10% more. So that's nice. We don't have a ton of those yet. Mostly they're doing physics research. So this is actually just going to help our physics research more than anything else. But, you know, it's nice to have. Eventually, that will be worth more. Now, we could actually jump right into another 10% and actually just help our science out even more. And I am of the opinion that in these kinds of games, 4X-style games, uh, that the more research you generate early, the better you are, right? Because you can go back and backfill some of the weapons, stuff like that. As long as you're not literally dying because you don't have the weapons, doing research first... And then backfilling weapons and other tech is better. So I, it's a little bit ballsy this early on, but I am actually going to go miniature containment fields and we're going to do more research station outposts. Even though we don't have a lot of research stations yet and the benefit is going to be relatively minor, I still think that it's good to get that, you know, 
get that going as soon as possible. It's like, we haven't even met anyone yet, so no reason for us to pick up, like, blue lasers or anything like that, right? We, we haven't even met anyone on the galactic scale where we would even want to have those. So. So now we're just sort of waiting for everything to tick along here. Our assembler is, is building what it's building. Our, uh... The research ships are scanning. We've done that, so let's go ahead and... Mining station on the other minerals. Now, this up here is a nebula, so actually, like, see how we're, like, ex uh, well, actually, we're kind of in... Are we in a nebula here? Is that why we're, like... I don't know, maybe it is, but, like, we're actually having some... Well, so we just have low-level ships, I guess. Um, a nebula makes it impossible for you to see into or out of um, a star system you have not been in. Or into or out of a star system at all. Um, which can be annoying for, like, surveying. So you can see, we've never been inside of this system, but we can still see it. Like, we know what kind of planet or what kind of star it is um and like we know its complete. name and stuff like that all right uh, construction complete uh let's go ahead and let's do the bigger one first so as we start going around this way we'll get caught in a nebula and it'll be a little bit harder to navigate so but again i don't i can't i'm not can i think this probably links and then this continues off this way would be my guess but we won't know unless we get closer to it Right now, I kind of want to keep backfilling. Ooh, this is going to be a... Well, it's going to be an okay system. At least it's going to be better than this. It will generate us some additional engineering research. And, you know, at least that's nice. It's always nice to grab systems that have additional research in them. Especially, again, early on in the game. Uh, and actually, this will generate some research as well. So I guess this is probably, we're probably going to go here next, and then we'll just sort of see what this backfilling looks like. And we'll probably end up trying to grab as much of this sort of core section as possible. And then we'll have like a couple ways out this way and one way out this way. Uh, another signs of precursor activity. It's a level eight anomaly. We're still level two. This is going to take way too long. We're just going to leave it be for now. Construction complete. Another construction complete. Once again, we grab the constructor. We build on this guy. Go ahead. And as you can see, like, yeah, what was listed under the star system name here is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as all of that unexploited stuff gets fully exploited. Um, now, I could use you and go down here and help the backfilling, or you could start going out this way. Actually, I think considering this exists, I want you to go this way first because this should be the end of that this should just be a dead end right here so i want to see you run over and and quickly identify that now we are of course getting to the point now where there are a couple of different systems that i might want to i'll take a look at this in a second um there are a couple of systems i might want to start grabbing so i could consider making a second assembly ship and I might do that. I think right now it might, it might be a little premature. Actually, I don't know. Now might be a great time for it. I think we'll actually do that. I think I'm gonna go to I'm going to the space station here. We'll go to the shipyard. We'll grab a um oh. Right. Hold on. We still have a world that we need to. I completely that should have been much earlier. We should have done that. Hold on. We're gonna grab we're gonna grab a, a fabricator ship. And then we are gonna grab. Oh, hold on. There's too many things going on. I need to check a look at this first. Okay. So during its survey of an asteroid, the uh, the Voyager, which is the name of the ship, discovered deposits of rare crystals. These crystals have properties that make them extremely efficient at focusing laser beams, also a critical component in most advanced electronics. In addition, many cultures treasure them as decoration and adornments. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for future exploitation. So this is a strategic resource. In civilization, these would be things like iron or uranium. In this game, uh, there's a couple of different ones. Rare crystals is one of them. And we don't have the means to extract it yet. 
But once we do, we can set up mining bases around them and extract them. And they are used, again, much like things like iron uh, in Civ, where they are used to uh, build higher quality things. And they can sometimes be used as, as maintenance costs for higher level fleets and stuff like that. Uh, so these are nice to, these are very important to have for later on in the game right now. Um, right now there's, there's not much I can do for it. So, uh, here I see, I clicked on colony ship and now it gave me these options. I can create a colony using either one of these two, um, things. We can either take our Omega terminal, which is our, like our main founding species, or we can take our adjutants. Our adjutants are of course our sort of starting cybernetic sort of slaves. Um, I think we're going to start with the Omega terminals. All right, and we spent a bunch of alloys to make these different ships and stuff like that. Uh, oh, yeah, Bingwin is fully surveyed now, so we can take the... Oh, yeah, never mind. It's already done. We already... Yeah, I sent that in. Okay. You've gone there. That is, in fact, a dead-end solar system. It connects to nothing else. So once we get that fully surveyed, we'll be able to uh, move back and, and explore out efficiently in this direction. Construction complete. All right, so this construction just finished, and our fabric, uh, fa our second like fabrication construction ship just popped out. So I'm going to tell you about this new one first, because for the new one we're going to build a star base over here. Go ahead, and then for the second one, you just finished over there, and actually you've you've still got one more mining station to build before you're ready to move on to anything else. So all right, simple enough. Are, there's no building going on on any of the planets right now, which is just fine. They both got lots of jobs to spare, plenty of housing to spare, plenty of amenities to spare. I think I'm just going to let both of these, uh, both these planets just build for a while. Don't really see any, any need to do anything else. I mean, the only thing is, is that I am really short on unity. Like, I'm generating Unity so slowly. And I think one of the things we might do here is you might, you'll see that there's like, we don't really have like any complex drone jobs here. That's because we don't have any buildings. So I think what we're going to do is I am going to build, well, I also want to build a research lab. Construction complete. We're going to build an uplink node. Uh, you finished a mining station. Yeah, so you are ready to move on. So we're going to build an uplink node there. That'll increase our unity. And then we'll, we might do a research station there as well. I mean, there, there will be growth, right? Like you are planning on, like you are growing. Yeah, we're, we're building more Omega terminals, first of all. And secondly, uh, your, um, the, the, the new cybernetic race will continue to grow. So yeah, I think that's, um, that's going to be fine. Uh, and then construction ship here. So you are finished. There's now nothing more to do in this system. So this system got finished, I believe. No, it has not quite finished yet. So here's what we're going to do. You are just going to plot a course to go to there. And by the time you get there, you should actually be able to build yourself a star base. Just not ready to quite give that order yet. And you can see here, this is the resource for those rare crystals. You see it's grayed out because we don't have the technology to deal with them yet. So they're just grayed out. Complete. There's nothing we can do about them. New ship finished our first, our star base over here and can start in on mining bases. Get us those sweet, sweet energy credits. What are you doing? You are, this is the last item. Okay, this is the last one and then this is going to be finished. System survey complete. And this one is finished. You notice this actually finished super fast because some of these systems have a ton of things in them. Some of them have almost nothing in them. And this one had like, like a couple things. They're all scanned and ready to go. Whereas this one had a lot of stuff in it. So you are going to go out this way. Survey system that way. Go ahead. System and that means... Complete. And now that this is finally done, thank you. Perfect timing. So now this new assembler can boom, boom, pop down new, and you're going to come this way, survey that system. Good. 
We are expanding. It's not as fast as I'd like necessarily. Well, we're moving at a fair click, I guess. Um, and, and actually, our population is quite large because instead of just taking over a new system with nothing in it, uh, like like landing down a... Um, like a, a colony with nothing in it, we took over a planet and generated like an additional 12 population instantly. So we're in a, uh, you know, we're off to a pretty good start here, I would say. It's, it's a pretty strong start. Additional traditions are available. Um, additional housing is nice, but I think we're going to do building and district upkeep reduced. Not that we're, like, worried about our spending. Actually, our spending is it's pretty good. Um, I think we're, we'll take that now. Again, it's just a matter of stockpiling a bunch of resources early. Okay, a couple things just happened. First of all, construction completed down here. So let's go into here. We'll take a look at our assembly ship. And um, I'm going to start with the research station to get that uh, physics research collected. And then we'll do the minerals after that. Also the colony ship so this is going to start help us start our new colony so we have sinestra one over here it is a um it's a desert world much like our home world was before we turned it into a machine world we're gonna colonize right here uh we will call it the unimatrix Uh, two, I believe. I believe I actually call... I believe the first Unimatrix... I put the actual digit. Yeah, okay. I just wanted the, the naming to be consistent. I am a programmer, damn it. The naming must be consistent. So there we go. Unimatrix 2 is going to be created. And we will... So the, the spawner, the, the colony ship will fly over here. We'll put down... And instead of us taking over a race, we're putting down like an actual colony. It's not very particularly Borg-like, but, you know, again, we're not really the Borg. Construction complete. All right, a fabricator there got done. So that's that whole thing is done. So let's go ahead and build a star base out here. This assembly is going to be finished in not too much longer. Construction here, complete. boom, you're done. Okay, so now we can take you. We're going to build mining, and we're going to build it right there. So you're going to set up two mining bases uh, to extract all those minerals. Oh, we can see that there's actually a potentially habitable planet over here as well. So this might be a, yet another, in fact, it probably will be yet another... Uh, colony. So actually, I'm going to go right to the shipyard, and before... I'm not even going to waste time. We're going to go to a colony ship. We're going to grab our Omega Terminals. And they are going to set up a colony here. So, um... Colonies move... The colony ship is moving. It hasn't set down yet. Once that sets down, I'm, uh, we're going to see how the colony process works. And it's Planetary going... Okay. Procedure. So, Machine. now, you see here under our planets, Unimatrix 2 exists here. And this is a col we are colonizing. This is not a fully functional colony yet. The planet, uh, the colony ship has gone into orbit. It has gone down onto the planet. It has landed. And our people are in the process of using the husk of the colony ship to like set up the first real colony. They are not a functioning colony yet. They are setting it up. And you see this bar will slowly fill. It actually takes quite a while. Uh, according to this, it takes like three years Anomalous surface variable. Uh, for that to work out. Interference in the pers uh, Piscus system. What a great name. Uh, it is a level one anomaly. Nom How about I learn to speak English? Wow. It's a level one anomaly. We are a level two scientist, so it's only going to take 100 days. Very quick to get this taken care of. Um, unexplained pattern of interference. We might as well just immediately research that. Go right ahead and do it. Construction complete. Construction complete. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll go into here. We will grab you. We will have you build a mining station right there. All right. 
And that'll be the last thing, because again, we cannot grab the crystals yet, so that'll just stay there. Uh, Construction so complete. All right, and we, again, we're just, we're glomming out as much as we can. We're grabbing all of these st uh, systems and adding them all to our collective. I always like to start with the research when possible, so we'll start over here with this engineering research, which can be gathered from that planet. Now, you can automate a lot of this stuff, and I will, I want to say, there may already be a comment or something um, where people are like, you know, all oh, this should all be automated, you should be automating this, especially early on in the game. I don't really like to automate this stuff because I like to make the decisions on which order we're doing things and i find that sometimes it doesn't make the best decisions and you know I, I like to have that sort of control um crash site here uh this is a level two we are level two it's only gonna take 120 days yeah let's research that go ahead and we are we are spending a little bit i believe of of uh upkeep on these Transport fleets, these armies that we recover, that we made, but yeah. Uh, a crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interfer interference in the Pisca system. It's getting late at night, guys. I woo -hoo. The signal is a song, a complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, to be precise, and one that Science Officer 01 cannot seem to get out of their head. Again, machine intelligence. Probably should rewrite that, but, you know, it is what it is. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown, though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside the galaxy. Well, that's a little terrifying, isn't it? Well, so that's curious. So we gained some society research and a fair amount of physics research. There we go. So some of our physics tracks just got a big boost. Construction complete. All right, you are done. There's nothing more for you to do in that system. Uh, we're already working in this system. I guess you're just going to go here and wait for the system to be ready to work. Again, this is why I don't generally create two um, of these too early, because you very quickly find that you only have enough work to keep one of them busy all the time, but... I think I think we'll be just fine with what we've got here. Complete. Construction complete down here. Uh, you know what? Let's just yeah, let's just do this. We'll do the we'll do the energy credit one first. And again, let's just take another quick look at the at the planets here. Uh, this one our our main our our home planet. We've got four jobs left over, so we've, we can still grow quite a bit. We've still got some housing, although we'll need to work on housing. We don't actually have... Sorry, these are Nexus districts. Okay, so once that once we get that um, tradition that gives Nexus districts plus one housing, uh, we will actually generate two more housing on this, on this world. So that'll be nice. So I think we're pretty good on housing for quite a while. We're good on amenities for quite a while. Nothing to worry about. And then over here, we've got five jobs and ten houses. Like, still tons and tons and tons to go on here. We are technically... Wait, didn't I set up a... Maybe I did. No, I was think I was considering setting up... How did... By the way, did this immediately get... It did. The coordinator jobs immediately got filled. Um, so we're still a little short. We have a slight deficit in energy credits, although we we're making plenty of energy credits to offset it. I don't necessarily like this deficit in, uh, in alloys, but I mean, I'm generating a ton of alloys. I mean, it's not a ton, but I could, well, I don't, I would like to generate more. Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, but I think research is really, really, really important. So I think actually we are, I am going to create, uh, a research lab on this world. And I think I might honestly create one more, like we've already got one back home. 
But I want to create another one. Like, we can deprioritize those jobs later if it becomes like we desperately need a bunch of alloys, but... Uh, crash site. We have discovered an ancient alien starship half buried in an asteroid crater. This science ship's exterior has an extensive sensory array, but no weaponry. The exterior was not damaged in any way before it crashed. We can assume this catastrophe was the result of a fatal error caused by the crew. Uncontrolled flight into terrain, we call that. How tragic. And that's it. Just nothing. We get nothing else besides that. Just how tragic. And then we move on to study other things. Well, we didn't get much off that, but some of these low-level ones you just don't get a lot out of. Uh, by the way, you are, yeah, just waiting for Iplade to be fully surveyed before you can start building. Ooh, hey, tech. Standardized Corvette patterns. So now we can build Corvettes and frigates faster, and they cost less to build. Huge. Absolutely huge. I mean, the 5% less cost... Eh, is nice. I mean, it's nice because alloys are, are very difficult to accumulate tons of, especially early on. The build speed plus 25% is real nice. That means once we actually start seeing our enemy, we can start pumping these out really quick. So let's go to research. Um, well, we can... So we, we generate a bunch more um, from the research station, and we're going to generate more. We can now do the same thing for mining station. Now, our mining stations are being benefited by the fact that we took the prosperity so they're already getting a benefit instead i think we're going to do this we're going to this is engineering research from a couch so the calculators are the job that the research stations generate uh, i just put in order to build two more of those so we're going to have a lot more calculators and so those calculators they generate some physics research they generate some society research and some engineering research once we have this uh, they will generate 20% more engineering research. So I think I think that's what we're going to do. Again, I like to get these ones out of the way as early as possible that increase our actual science yield. They're not really beneficial on their own, but they stack up really nice. And I know for a fact that, like, like I, I know for a fact that the science costs are going to get out. They're, they're going to get insane pretty quickly all right so several things just happened we paused the game um so we finished a mining base here so let's put up an, uh, one last one and then this will be finished and then here in piscus we finished our surveying completely so i guess we just keep moving you're gonna go off this way survey um this assembler is still waiting and in Piscus, we have a, uh, a habitable world. So once again, I want to double check and make sure. Yep, we are almost done. With yet another. Oh, OK, so these this is interesting. Um, hold on, I'm going to let this sort of go out for a second. Just see if there's any more. OK, so if we look at our government, you'll actually see that uh, instead of having a council like you have with most species, we just have a bunch of nodes. They're all just like basically you know, sub processors from our, from, from our, our Borg queen here. Well, one of them is our growth node and the growth node just picked up a new skill, picked up information processing. All leader experience, uh, is up 5%. So all of our, all of our different nodes and the queen will generate, uh, experience faster now. That's nice. Uh, they actually, they started with this one, uh, with food, mechanical pop assembly speed plus 3%, which is nice and food from jobs plus 10%. So that's nice. All of our different nodes all have these different effects. Um, and they will all continue to gain more of these traits as they level up. Now that's true of ev and that's true of any leader that you put in a council position. They will always like just sort of, you know, slowly accumulate positive and negative traits. But I just want to point out that it's true here too. Except instead of, like, selecting actual leaders, they are just nodes. So there we go. And there it is, by the way. Colony ship just popped in. So we will go... Uh, except I just realized something. Very dumb. We'll move you here. We can't actually do that until it's in our borders. <laughs> I just realized that. So we will have to let our fabricator finish this mining base. Then move over here and set up a star base and only then can we actually colonize the planet 
That was just dumb by me. Uh, I completely forgot that I would need to do that. I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse, uh, in, in, in a manner of speaking. Thankfully, it's not going to matter a ton. I mean, it is going to take a long time for the ship to actually get there. And hopefully by that point, we'll have, you know, it, it won't actually end up sitting and just idling for too long. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, that science ship just finished. So let's go over here and survey that system. And of course, you can now build there. We'll expand our borders. Construction complete. You finished your construction, so now we can uh, expand that away. Okay, yeah, it's really not going to cost us much time at all. My little silly uh, error in in <laughs> uh, in sort of phasing everything and making sure that everything happens in the right order. It's not really going to cost too much. I was really hoping there would be something interesting with this one. Anytime you get to these sort of end of a line ones, there's a possibility that there's something really interesting there. Or at least I tend to think that there is. Maybe it's just because I had a couple of games, a couple of early games that had like dead end solar systems generate like unique things, but I don't know. Um, let's see. Assembler. Go ahead and just... Another mining station. Five, by the way, five energy credits on one node is actually quite good. Like, you generally get two or three of a resource on a node. Getting five of any one resource on a single node is actually quite, quite good. Well, all right, so the colony ship is in place now. So we are losing some time. It's not a ton of time. We're going to lose... I don't know. We're going to lose like a couple months of time. It's 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 inefficient for sure. But oh, hello. Ah, it's a fallen empire. Okay. Yes, yes, we've heard it all before. We are Juven Archivists and you are the System Omega. Greetings, well met. Stay out of our space or face certain doom and so forth. Now, if you'll excuse us, we're quite busy. So these are fallen empires. There are two of them on the map. That is the default. Um, is that there will be two of these on the map. You can adjust that in a galaxy generation. Um, but fallen empires are interesting. They are, they basically spawn in as like end game empires. They have all the techs unlocked. They have special buildings and ships that you can't actually get access to normally. Um, and they are like God level powerful, right? Um, and they, but they are fallen empires. They are, they have fallen into degeneracy and, um, uh, and decadence and they will not, they're not active on the galactic scale. They're not trying to expand. They're not trying to engage in diplomacy. They're just sort of keeping to themselves. Um, and this can change in a couple of different ways. Um, for instance, if an empire like my dumbass decides to charge in and attack them, they will reactivate, they will awaken and become active on the global on the galactic scale again. If any one um if any one empire, like for instance, again, myself, starts taking over too much of the galaxy, uh, they can reawaken and come to deal with us. And then there are endgame threats uh, called crises that can that will spawn in. That's sort of part of the flow of the game is you get to end game there will be an end game crisis that will spawn in um it is possible that these uh that these fallen empires will engage in some way with that uh end game crisis um and altogether uh that means that uh these are interesting little like story elements and you can choose how to interact with them. They will, if you're, if you're friendly with them and engage with them in, di uh, in diplomacy, they can actually give you gifts. They can actually bestow great gifts upon you. Um, but you know, if you're antagonistic against them, you know, they're a very, very high level threat that might take you towards the end game to deal with. But once you do deal with them, you can, you can generate some extremely powerful planets um, from the stuff that you take from them. Um, so it, it can be like, an actual strategy to like try and build 
and like destroy some of these guys as quickly as you can. But that's probably not what we're doing. As much as I like the idea of just throwing myself at these guys as quickly as possible, the answer is going to be uh, we'll let them we'll let them be. Our, our our tactical scans show that they are way beyond our power level, and we'll we'll just we'll put a bookmark in the in in that. And so we'll say uh, yeah, scheduled assimilation postponed. It actually doesn't matter which one of these three, because as you can see there, the archivists care little for our diplomatic maneuverings. They don't give a shit what we say. They don't care how we say it. They don't, they don't give a damn. So I'm just I'm just going to say scheduled assimilation postponed. Uh, our theoretic models have long suggested the existence of other intelligent civilizations in our galaxy. This theory has now been confirmed. The alien political entity that we have encountered appears to be an old one, possessing technology that is far advanced of our own. Caution is advised. The data must be analyzed. And yeah, again, our, our tactical scans have decided they are too much for us. And they are right up here, huh? Interesting. Yeah, they are they are too much for us, and we are just gonna go ahead and let them be. There are other there are hopefully other things in the galaxy that we can actually spend time dealing with. So you actually okay, so first with the colony ship. First things first. This colony ship is gonna go ahead and settle here. This is gonna be Oh ah, I messed up. This is gonna be, you guessed it, Unimatrix 3. Let's go. All right, so you're going to go and settle there. And then you are... Yeah, we're going to do research. Set up a research base around the star. All right. So now we'll have two... Technological acquisition success. Oh, several things just happened at once. Oh, so we're going to have two colonies in building at the same time, which is going to be super nice. Um, okay. So that's the old construction complete. That's a new construction complete. So we'll deal with that first. You actually, I don't really have anything to deal with that with. Um, God, because right now this is not looking like a good system. I probably won't want to waste the influence because I don't have a lot of it. I probably don't want to waste the influence on expanding our territory into that. So you are honestly, for the time being... Just going to sit in that star system, my man. You're going to just do nothing for a little while. Sucks to suck. Uh, technology acquired. Uniform data standards. Yes, we get a, uh, We just got a chunk of unity, which you'll see when we got that, we now have enough tradition to unlock uh, new enough unity to unlock a new tradition. So we just got a chunk of unity. Uh, we will gain 5% additional unity per month, which is good because uh, we kind of need it. Our, our unity expenditure um, is going up because, uh, again, as our leaders, those, um, uh, especially those nodes, like in our queen, as they go up in, in level, they actually spend more unity. I believe the idea here is that like having all of these great leaders, um, like they're pulling and pushing our society, or at least they're, that the idea is that they're pulling and pushing our society in, in different directions. Um, and our people might be more willing to follow them than us. So as they grow more powerful, they're spending more and more of our unity to make sure that we keep everything together. I think that's the idea. Um, again, that's another thing that doesn't really work with our setup as a machine intelligence. But uh, maybe you just consider that, like, maybe it's the it's the deviancy in the models that can cause, like, uh, schisms internally. And we have to spend our resources in keeping that those schisms down and that's what's going on here. I don't know. But the idea is it's a balancing act. It's it's it's, it's just to the balance of the game. Um, so anyway, we get uh, additional unity and um, there's some edicts called campaigns that we can do. Um, I haven't talked too much about edicts. I will. I might take a look at them in a second here. Um, generally, I find that edicts are. I, I don't know. I've had a, I've had a I haven't really found a start where I'm like relying heavily on edicts or that I'm getting big benefits from edicts. So I haven't really thought about this too much, but there are some new edicts that are un unlocked because of this. Okay. So let's go into a new research for society. Uh, pop growth speed. This will increase the growth speed of our cybernetic uh, populations, which is nice. Um, ooh, we do have two deep sinkhole blockers that we can clear if we get subterranean colonization. That might be what we go for. Obviously, I do want ground defense planning. Um, 
if we make if we make soldier jobs on our planets, we get additional naval capacity for them, which means that we can build a big build bigger fleets and defense. But that's there's only defense army damage. Our actual like um, our offensive armies won't get a benefit from that. So it doesn't I don't really care about that too much. So yeah, subterranean colonization is the big one. That's what we're gonna take. All right, let's go. Oh, I've missed one thing again. So yeah, we got this. So um, additional housing, I think is is nice, but I really don't think we need it right now. Instead, I want complex drone output. Yeah, I really want complex drone output. Complex drones are, um, like if we were to take a look at the worlds that we've got here, um, the complex drones are the replicators. These are the things that are making more of us. These are the coordinators. This is what's generating our unity. They're the calculators. That's what's generating our science. The fabricators. That's what's generating our alloys. Uh, and the hunter seeker drones, which is uh, which do produce unity, um, but they also reduce deviancy. Uh, and again, we are we're a machine intelligence. All of our different units and nodes might generate some level of deviancy, and that's bad. DVNC affects our stability negatively. Having high stability is good things because um, it means the, the higher our stability, the more our jobs generate. So like it's a big feedback loop in this way. So, you know, so we, we need some hunter seekers to make sure that our DVNC stays down. Um, so yeah, our complex drones are now generating um, even more output which is huge, especially because of research. Planetary settlement procedure initiated. Nice. And you see, we just started our yet another world, yet another colony going up. This solar system does now have um, minerals in it. That's a question. Ooh, and now it's got science in it. Construction complete. Oh, I might have to do expand into there. I don't necessarily want to, but I might have to. Really do not necessarily want to, because I don't want to have to spend the influence on it. We'll see if anything else pops up in here. Over here, we've got some science popping up. Oh, alloys. All right, we have to take this. We have to take this system. I did not really want to, but we have to. We'll send you in so that you're in position when the time comes. I was really hoping to be able to avoid that one. Like, it's 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 a dead-end system. Nobody's going to come into our system System's from there. Right. We don't have to expend, expand into it, but... All right, so we got that done. We we finished this one, which is the dead end. We've now explored this, which uh, just a little bit of science is just... Uh, it doesn't make me very happy. It does not make me, like, insanely excited to go do it. Um, I'm going to go here, and we're actually going to explore up this way. We're not going to attack these guys or anything like that, but I do want to find the edge of their borders. We're not going to do something stupid but I do want to see the edge of their borders. Complete. Uh, construction just finished there. See, now we're going to run into this situation where I don't have enough influence to be expanding like two star bases at a time. So you are just going to have to move in here and just sit because like, as much as this is not a good system, it's a choke point system. So if I want to expand out in this way at all, I have to take this system. So I, you know... I don't want to spend the resources in, in plopping down a star base here. But I don't really have uh, the opportunity. Uh, t now, that's a named... So, that's actually like a... Um, that is an actual leader. Um, that's one of our scientists. So, expertise... Sorry, expertise propulsion. Um, which only affects them if they're a counselor, and they'll never be a counselor. So... It's a little frustrating. <laughs> and see, we are we are blobbing out a bit. We're starting to get a little bigger. Oh, there's a little bit of weird artifacting here with these with some of these galaxies that have like big holes in them and stuff. 
Uh, is it technically now because I have vision of like the edge of the galaxy? Like it wants to like show like half the distance to like the next star basically in any direction that I have access to. It's just, it's a little weird visual bug Anomalous here. Surface variable detected. It's not really a bug, I guess. It's just like, it's just a weird artifacting of the, of the shape of the galaxy. Uh, it's another level eight anomaly, another sign of precursor activity. We are now level three as a scientist, which means it's not quite as bad as it was before, but still at 1080 at 1080 days, that's still what? I mean, it's about three years, right? Like that's a pretty significant amount of time to spend uh, on this. So I think, again, we're just going to leave it be for now. We'll come back to these um, more, these higher level ones. We'll come back to them later. Uh, yeah, I think we're just we're waiting on the construction. There's really nothing they can do. Uh, our first colony is about to pop here before too much longer. Oh, and we have a council agenda. I talked about these in the first episode. I don't really understand these council agendas very much, but might as well launch them. We'll get additional unity gain. I mean, high unity is very important. Um, but now the only agenda, this is what I was talking about. Now the only agenda left is this. I don't really want to run it right now, but like, I don't see why not. Um, I mean, I might as well run it. I mean, it, while it's while it's like being set up, the leader maximum negative traits is minus two. I don't know what that means. Um, because I don't know what the maximum negative traits is at any given time. My assumption is that it would be two, because this takes down to would take it down to zero, but I don't know. I'm 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 not sure. Um removes negative traits from ruler and counselor nodes. None of them have negative traits, so it won't be really useful to actually launch this when we launch it, but eh. We're going to set it up because it's the only thing left. Again, I say I don't think, feel like I ever have choices on this screen. Um, and I guess since we're here, we can take a look at edicts. Um, edicts, there, we have an edicts fund. So basically, these, some of these edicts, they cost... Um, uh, they cost a certain amount of unity, like per month, to run these things, right? We have a fund of 20 unity... So basically, if we activated this, it would actually only be costing us three unity per month instead of 23 unity because 20 of it would be being paid from our edicts fund. Um, eventually, for some government types and for some choices you make, you can actually take this edicts fund and like get it insanely high. And then there are some choices that you can make which can give you lots of really powerful edicts. And then if you have a ton of edicts fund, you can get all these benefits for functionally no cost. So there are benefits here. Now, like this one, this is part of that, um, those additional, these are those campaigns that we gained. Um, and these don't cost unity. Instead, these cost energy credits. And so these don't count against the edicts fund. The edicts fund cannot help pay for them. Um, instead, we just straight up are going to pay energy credits for it. And in this case, the benefit is leader experience gain plus 10%. That's really nice because here's the thing our leaders aren't just the council remember our leaders are also like the the commander in charge of our fleet it's also um the the officers in charge of our various planets and 34 energy credits like we're we're generating 54 additional per month i actually think i'm going to click this box i am going to click this we're going to activate it we're going to have to pay pretty close attention to our energy credit situation, especially as these different um, colonies start getting set up because these are going to start, these are going to chew up our energy credits because they're going to have a lot of buildings that need maintenance and, and populations that need maintenance without actually generating a lot for a little bit. Uh, we have a crashed ship, which is routine at level three. We are level three. I think we're going to go ahead and research this. This one, we will we will take our time to research. We are going to get, this is going to go off for too much longer. Okay, we have established our first actual colony. So let's take a look at that. And I think this will be the last thing we do before we finish off the episode here. Um, so we generated, we started with two population. So if we go to the... The popular, you can see that, yeah, we have two Omega terminals and they immediately, like, there's only one building and that's the deployment post. 
but it has a few jobs associated with it. A replicator job and a hunter seeker drone job, both of which immediately got filled by the two nodes, by the two uh, uh, sort of units that landed with it. Now, one of the things we can do is we can resettle. And this is something that I highly recommend trying to do uh, relatively early um, is settle in uh, a new population. However, you got to remember housing is important. Um, so I think one of the first things I'm actually going to do is I'm going to build a nexus uh, district. So this generates a bunch of housing. Um, it also will generate a new building slot because, you know, these buildings are really strong. They're stronger than the district usually. So generating a new building slot will be great. Um, and it generates some amenities. You see, it's a, it starts a little short on amenities. So we'll do that. But then while that's working, uh, I'm going to resettle one um, low level. And we can pick which where we're taking it from. But I think... Um, yeah, we could we could take it from here if we wanted. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take it from the Unimatrix one from our home world, and we are going to take one of the basic level pops. So um, I think that probably for us means uh, tech drones. I think uh, so. We will snag one of these, and it will it will come in as a maintenance drone worker. So now you'll see one of these maintenance drones. Our uh, job positions are being filled, and eventually you know we'll fill other jobs with them as well. But it's it's important to start getting some population on these planets. Um, with the next Nexus District coming in, I think the next thing we're going to do probably after that is, I mean, looking at things. Technological acquisition uh, Okay, tech acquisition. So I got to hold for a second. We're going to pause. Um, Yeah, I think Alloy Foundry is the best, but yeah, we're going to put an Alloy Foundry up because we're spending some Alloy to keep this up uh, and we really need to like up our, our Alloy production. Okay, so that's our first new new colony. We'll come back to it at some point because once it, once it has more housing, we can start shifting more people into it. Um, research station outpost. Yeah, so our physics finished. Research station outpost... Uh, an additional 10% from that. And I think, again, we still haven't met anyone that's going to be that we want to go to like to war with or anything like that. So as much as I kind of want to do deflectors, I think we're just going to pick quantum theory. So our, there are our scientist jobs on our planets will generate more physics research. All right. I think we're, we're set up pretty well. We're starting to, you know, snowball the science advancements here a little bit. Um, we are snow. We are we are glomming out. We're blobbing out into the galaxy. We have our little territory. We're going to continue to try and grab as much of it as possible. Uh, we are continuing to explore. We're continuing to expand. We now have four worlds which we occupy. Well, three which we fully occupy. One which we are working on. I think it's a good start. May the subjugation of the galaxy continue. <laughs> Well, guys, if you like what I'm doing here, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. All that YouTube stuff that I really don't like having to say, but it really does help the channel when it happens. Uh, so, uh, my name is Bentanis Fugit. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you in the next one.